It took me seven hours with this 4x5 film camera to create this one photo. And I'm not going to make you wait till the end. Here it is. And by the way, if that's all you want from this video, it's cool. Just do me a solid to help me beat the YouTube algorithm and just leave a like and a comment. But if you want to stay, I'm going to explain why I wanted to create this particular photo, how I created it using a composite of four film photos shot on this 4x5 camera, and I'll actually show you the later breakdown as well as some nice behind the scenes footage. But I want to create one shot using a composite of 4x5 images of a core just kind of memory, but thing that happens for me regularly, which is the way that I keep in touch with my brother, my only sibling. My brother and I weren't huge gamers growing up. We liked playing video games, but it wasn't like we had to have the latest console all the time. Also, our, our parents couldn't really afford it for a long time. And so we just played the GameCube and our PS1 for so long, like mostly Super Smash Bros. We had like Kirby Air Ride and a few other random games, but that, that was our extent of video games. As we got a little bit older, that kind of stayed the same. Neither of us were super into video games. We'd go through little phases here and there of like one really good game, for example, Skyrim or Battlefield 1, but we weren't crazy about it. When the pandemic hit, one of the ways that we kept in touch was by picking up video games again. This right here is where I play video games. I always have my feet propped up on this table and there's the TV and the PS5. And we played a lot of Rocket League. We played Apex Legends. And we played, I think, a lot of Battlefield V together. And so that was our way of, you know, we'd be chatting through the game and playing the game together. And it was fun. In a time when especially we couldn't see each other in person, that was an awesome way to stay in touch. So now, you know, he lives in DC, I live in Chicago. We don't get to see each other very often. So we still keep in touch by playing video games. And I want to create what that looks like for myself to be able to have that core kind of memory um, forever. So the timing breakdown goes like this. I spent about two hours doing the setup of the lighting, the loading of the film, setting up my film camera to have enough tilt to get most of the entire photo in focus, everything like that. It took me about 30 minutes to develop the film, it took me about two hours of waiting for the film to dry before I could scan. It took me about 30 minutes to scan and get them onto the computer and all. And then it took me about, uh, I don't know, two hours of editing to get this looking exactly how I wanted it to look. So that's seven hours total to create one final image. Now, if I had shot this digitally, even doing the composites, it probably would have cut off uh, I'd say four hours from that entire process. So it still would have taken a few hours to create this one image, which isn't absurd, but it's a lot of time if you're used to typically just spending 15 to 20 minutes on editing one photo. So here are the four images. These were all shot at a one second exposure, F11 on Tmax 400. One of the shots, which I believe was this one, I totally forgot to change the aperture to f11 and shot this wide open at f5.6. Luckily, it worked out for what I needed it for. So let me explain real quick what each of these four shots were for and why I put the lights where I put them. First one was the base shot, probably the most important one, the one of me, the subject, uh, perfectly focused, in clear, and nicely lit in a way that would make it look like the lighting uh, was coming from this lamp back here when in reality it's coming from up here but our eyes play a trick on us where you know it's two-dimensional we're looking at a two-dimensional image so as long as the light is going in this direction or seemingly going in this direction it will look fine the thing that needed to be replaced in this uh, was this part the wall so you can see there's a massive reflection in that frame on the wall so that's what this shot was for that was purely to replace it with just this back part of the wall. The third shot was to replace the background to have better lighting on the desk and table and all of that. So actually the light is, is uh, it's, you know, it's over here in real life, but it's lighting all of this background scene. And I replace this background here in the original base image with all of that. And then the final image was to bring the couch, the single couch a little more forward and to replace this light here the background of this image replaces the light part here, and the chair here replaces the stand over here. So when we look at the actual image and editing and compositing these all together, 
Photoshop does an excellent job of auto aligning if your camera doesn't move at all. And I did a good job of that. Didn't bump the camera at any point when I was putting the film holders in. Didn't, you know, I was really gentle with it. Didn't move the camera. And so Photoshop auto aligned these for me. And after that, it was really just a matter of creating these kind of masks where I could select which parts of each of the four images I actually want to use. So we've got the base showing, only the base. The next layer we brought in was to bring in the couch, right? And also to uh, change the, the camera bag. My camera bag always sits there, which is why I left it in the photo. And this shot, I think, has better lighting of that. So uh, if we look at just that part, that's what's being put into the image. Okay, adding in the third shot, which I've got here in group one, the third shot is there to replace the background. So when we look at it here, you'll notice that the background changes, yes, but so does this wall, and I'll explain that in a second, but before and after. And so when we look at just group one, what we're seeing is what I put there. And I left the wall there because I thought maybe it would work out. It looked nice. And then I realized that it was a little bit too dark. And so I used the original photo that I took for the purpose of replacing that wall and frame and to get rid of the reflection. And if we add that in, you can see it just replaces that back wall behind me. And the final adjustment to add some oomph to the image before also taking it into Lightroom and before cropping and all of that is some dodging and burning. Okay, so without that, that's what this looks like. And I'm just gonna zoom into me here. When I add in the dodging and burning, here's what happens. Okay, so there's some, some, some drama that's added to uh, my face. There's more contrast that's very selective to mostly just my face, but I, if, you know, if, you, if we isolate these layers, you can see I added it kind of everywhere. Anywhere that's not gray is dodging or burning. So all of that comes together to create this one final image that I'm proud of. I think it looks great and accomplished my mission of creating an image that represents the memory of how I keep in touch with my only sibling. If this was helpful for you or you enjoyed it, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I post a lot of things about film photography, but I also am trying to mix it up with some more storytelling things this year as a way to diversify my audience to be not just dudes. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully. <laughs>